that it's Friday afternoon. It's the school bell just rang. You're ready to get out of here. It's been a long week and you're out in the parking lot. You're in your car and you know, you've got that little clicker because no one uses a key to get in their car anymore. And you click the unlock button and you're yanking on your door and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? And I'm just like, oh, maybe my thing is dead. My little clicker thing. I need a new one. So I just used the key. You just use the key to get into your car. You don't think anything of it. You're sitting down. You're ready to go. You put your key in the ignition. You turn it. Nothing's happening. What do you do? You, what's going on? What happens? Well, this is exactly what happened to me. I had plans. I was trying to get somewhere. And ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's when I freaked out. I'm calling my mom, trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know much about cars. <laughs> and I was like, I knew enough that my battery was dead. What happened? Well, I left my lights on all day. Yeah, it's bad. Don't do that. So, how many of you believe that you know a lot about cars? <laughs> exactly, okay? So I'm just gonna call one of you. Um, Zach, which one? Where's the car battery? Right there. Yeah. Right here? No, that's the engine. There you go. It's like to the right, yeah, right there. Right here? Yes, correct. So most people don't know that. I asked Abby earlier, and she was like, right here! <laughs> I was like, oh, not really. <laughs> that's a really big car battery. Well, here's my little demonstration of my car battery. And a lot of people don't know their cars. And according to Don McClasson, an employee for Geico, he says that most of us spend a significant amount of time in our cars, whether it's commuting or running errands or simply enjoying the road. But many of us don't know the basics of vehicle maintenance or repair. So today, I'm going to demonstrate how to jumpstart a car. This is a really simple task. It may take all of five or 10 minutes, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. And there are three important steps that you have to do. You have to prepare to jumpstart your car. You have to actually do it. And then you have to take the necessary precautions to ensure your safety. I have done this before. Whenever I was in that situation, the ROTC instructor had to help me. My dad, when I got home, explained the whole situation to me, so that way I'm prepared in case it happens again. Knowing me, it might, I might do something like that again. So first, I'm gonna tell you how to prepare. You wanna make sure that you park both of your cars together, like closely enough so that way the jumper cables can reach. And then you want to make sure that you open the bonnet, which is the car hood, and that's all you have to do. Like that one, that's easy. So now you know how to prepare to jumpstart your car, and now you actually have to do it. So once you do that, here's a closer up picture of the car battery. And then here's how you set it up. The red end, which is the positive end, which on these it says pause, hooks on to the red. Like that. And then the black one, and you do that for both, the dead battery and the working car battery. And then you take the black end and you just hook it up to the negative, which it also says negative on there. But you also want to remember that you, on the working car battery, you can also hook the black one either onto that like that, or you can hook it onto like a metal bolt or screw or something like that, as long as it's metal, which that's how I hooked it up on my car. And here's my dad's truck, and he hooked up the negative right there. So as long as it's metal, got electricity flowing. So once you have everything hooked up, you want to start the engine of the working car battery. You want to wait about two minutes or so, make sure everything's going well, then you start yours, the dead battery. And once it's all good and the battery's recharged, you want to make sure that you drive or have it running for about 30 minutes which what I had to do, I was going all around Hickory and you just want to make sure everything's working well. So you know, you don't want to get back in your car and have to do it all over again. So that's how you actually follow through with it. 
And then I'm going to tell you what to watch out for now. You want to make sure you're looking around your battery and there's no damage, no leaking, or make sure it's not corroded. And then you want to remove any loose clothing. So we don't want those veil sleeves and getting caught in something. And then you want to make sure that everything in your car is cut off. That means completely your lights are off, the radio is not playing. I mean, you want to avoid any kind of danger and <clears throat> you want to keep other metal objects away. So don't have your cell phone laying or just keep it clear. And <clears throat> according to the Sight and Hearing Association, each year nearly 6,000 motorists suffer serious eye injuries even blindness because of improperly jump-starting a dead vehicle battery. I found this on State Farm's website and this explains exactly why it is very important that you know exactly what you're doing whenever you're doing, whenever you're jump-starting your car. Yes, it's simple, but maybe five years from now, you're in this situation. You didn't exactly remember everything I said. Well, just make sure you ask somebody. Go find someone who knows what they're talking about. Just, I mean, no one wants to lose an eye or be blind, and so that'll be good. And I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Is this how you properly set, can y'all see that? Is this how you properly set it up? No. Mm -mm. Why not? They have to be, like, facing. Well, actually, they can be nose and nose, but they're still close enough, like, for the jumper cables to reach and you can kind of somewhat see where it's hooked up on this battery and then you can't really see it on my car. Is this correct? Loosely. Exactly. And that, I mean, what's going to happen? That could, sparks could be flying or something and you just really want to avoid that. So now y'all know how to prepare to jumpstart your car. Now you know how to actually perform the task of jumpstarting your car, and you know the necessary precautions that you need to take to ensure your safety. It is a helpful skill if you're in a desperate situation like I was. I was literally like, oh my gosh, my car's broken. Oh no, my mom's gonna be really mad at me. And so now I challenge you to be that person that actually understands and that can help someone in this need. And now the ladies have a great way to impress the guys with their car <laughs> knowledge. <laughs>